Hello all and welcome back. Hopefully by now you're pretty familiar with this hydrogen powered car. I've done a few videos now covering the fuel tank, the engine and the ECU along with the modifications required to convert a petrol car to run on hydrogen gas and it's surprisingly very simple. Now a common question I get asked is, is there a way to run a converted car that runs on hydrogen uh, with the stock ECU? Now in theory with modern engines and modern ECUs the uh, timing advance has changed uh, in accordance to uh, how the car is operating and what I mean by that is the timing is adjusted. The ECU does this automatically to optimise the performance of the engine. It also has a protection method built into the standard ECU which retards the timing uh, if knock is experienced within the engine and that's what the knock sensor is for. Now, as we all know, we need to adjust the timing or retard the timing when using hydrogen to protect the engine as the combustion of hydrogen happens a lot quicker uh, than petrol or diesel. So we have to retard the timing. But if the standard ECU retards the timing automatically when it senses knock, then perhaps you don't need a completely standalone ECU to run the hydrogen powered car. Now, it's pretty obvious the answer to this question and that is yeah you're gonna need uh, a new ECU, a piggyback ECU in this case, that's what this car is running, a Nodis Ignition ECU and um, it, we need that to retard the timing. Now the reason why I've done that instead of relying on the standard ECU is it's pretty obvious really and that is the ECU only knows knock is happening if knock has already occurred which means Okay, the ECU is a retarded timing because it's experiencing knock and therefore you can carry on driving uh, because the timing's already been retarded. But um, the knock has already occurred. So if you keep on doing this, the damage is obviously going to happen over time to the engine internals, and that's obviously no good. Um, but just to prove a point today, um, I'm going to be uh, putting the gas tank in the boot, I'm running this engine on the standard ECU. We're going to be looking at the um, the ignition points and um, we're going to witness what the ECU is doing and how it pulls back the timing um, to, to compensate for the knock that it's experiencing. Now you can drive around, like I've said, with the standard ECU, but it's not advised because the engine will, will break eventually because knock is still happening within the engine it's just the ECU is compensating for it by retarding the time and obviously you wouldn't have to do this if you ran your own ECU um, so let's put the fuel tank in the car and um, let's give it a go Okay then, so the hydrogen tank is in the boot ready to go, but I've not connected it to the engine yet because I want to show you the engine with its standard ignition timing whilst running on petrol, and then that way we can compare the two. So I've connected up a OBD2 reader so we can get the signals from the ECU. And I'm using an old phone here, which is going to connect to it. So it's just connecting to the ECU now. And then I'll show you the timing advanced, revs and the load. Now the load's obviously going to be zero because we aren't actually going anywhere. So here we are. So here we are. So we're connected now and it's showing eight degrees timing advance, 900 RPM, which not far off that at all. Now this obviously isn't the most accurate thing in the world. The load must be wrong there um, because we aren't actually going anywhere unless that load means something else and I'm just misreading it. Now if I accelerate you'll see that jump up and down. 
so 34 degrees is pretty much to be max timing advance on this 38 degrees 37 so high 30s is the standard ignition timing whilst running on petrol and that's at around let's say 2100 rpm 35 degrees ignition timing so we'll compare that now to what it's like running on hydrogen and what we should see is the timing advance jumping back so roughly around three degrees ignition um, and we'll, we'll, we'll have a look and compare it from there really uh, when I've been using the notice ECU I have it set to around five to ten um, degrees timing advance which isn't isn't a great deal at all and uh, if you want to increase power you could advance it some more but that's running the risk of engine knock when running on hydrogen so here's our baseline that's what we're running at we're gonna say we're gonna get it to 2000 rpm there we go and that's our timing advance on petrol let's take it from there okay so the high flow injectors are in the hydrogen gas line is plumbed in and we're running the stock ECU. Let's fire it up. Oh, I think the battery's dead. There we go. Right, so we're now running on hydrogen gas on the stock ECU. I'll go turn up the gas feed. Okay, so what happened there was I connected the gas line but didn't actually turn on the gas bottle completely. There we go, it's a bit better. Struggling now. I'm going to turn up the gas pressure a little bit. Okay, so the gas pressure is now turned up to about 8 bar on the hydrogen tank. And we are live. So if we look at the ignition timing now. We did it to about 2000 RPM. It looks like the ignition time is actually the same as petrol, a little bit less. But this might be because no knock has occurred yet. Because the engine isn't at full operating temperature. But that's where we're at at the moment. So it's a little bit less than where it was before. But it seems to be working absolutely fine. So this just proves that you can run an engine on hydrogen gas with a stock ECU. It's just not advised because you will damage the engine overall. Uh, especially in this case, because the timing actually hasn't changed. It hasn't updated itself. So yeah, advise that you use an actual ECU to control the timing because you want to pull that timing back because you're going to damage the engine. Uh, no knock is occurring at this actual point but it will do when the engine's warmed up because I have seen it with my own eyes. The engine starts sputtering, starts backfiring and um, you will cause damage to the engine. Yeah, so it's still at 30 uh, timing advanced, 30 degrees. But there you go. So if I get out at 2000 RPM, this is it at running on pure hydrogen gas. There you go. Pretty crazy really, the engine hasn't already started backfiring. You can drive the car like this now, but uh, it's just not advised. Let's turn it off.
Okay, so we've still got the standard ECU in. We haven't seen any changes in ignition timing with the standard ECU, which could indicate a faulty knock sensor or the engine's happy running on hydrogen and there's no knock is occurring for the ECU to adjust or compensate for. So let's just take it for a drive up the road so we can simulate uh, a load on the engine. Did just hear a backfire then. So perhaps the ECU or the engine's now warm because I have left this idling for a little while. Ignition timing still hasn't changed, so uh, we're going to take it for a quick drive. This is fantastic, 100% hydrogen, standard ECU. we're noticing a difference. I have no actual torque. Yeah, we're struggling now. We're going to have to turn this around. We've got no low end torque. I have to really ac accelerate in order to get any sort of power out of it. And I keep on hearing the occasional backfire. So the ECU is not happy. I'm also getting backfires out of the air intake. So there we go. So that's our test. So under no load conditions, the ECU is, is, is absolutely fine. The standard ECU is absolutely fine. As soon as we have a load on the engine and it's trying to uh, compensate for its timing, as it would do, because it thinks it's running on petrol. Um, but we're not running on hydrogen and the ECU doesn't understand what's going on. So there we go. You're going to need a standalone ECU or a piggyback ECU when running on hydrogen gas. Yeah, the ECU is not happy at all. It's holding its revs high and there was no, no low end power there. I really had to accelerate. I'm going to cut that off because... Yeah, the engine's not happy now. But there we go. I didn't want to accelerate any, any higher than that. And um, I, went, I didn't go any more than about 3,000 RPM right there. So, well, there we go. Test proven. So, you can ride on pure hydrogen gas on the stock ECU, which is pretty cool in itself. But sadly, if you're going to do a conversion of a car, I mean, it was pretty obvious anyway, but you're going to have to fork out a good three, four hundred pound on ECU and get it mapped at a, uh, a place where I do remapping or remap it yourself. Um, to be safe, you probably want to be running a uh, top dead center ignition. Uh, so zero ignition timing. Uh, but when you're starting to accelerate and the RPMs are picking up, probably want to bring that down to about 10, 10 degrees advanced. Uh, probably no more than that. Um, but yeah, there we go. Hope you enjoyed the video. It was a bit of a weird one, a bit different. Um, but I hope that answers some questions for you all. Uh, thanks for watching. Also forgot to mention, this is how much gas we used on those lit, those three minutes of driving or the engine idling. So we've used about 20 bar of gas there. Um, and that's about it. But uh, not very economic either, or very, not very fuel efficient running on the standard ECU.